So welcome to Essendon School and today we're going to look at Presorita Padotanasana and this is of course preceded by uh, Padvakanasana and Paravita Padvakanasana if I got the names right, it's not my strong point. Um, so what we're doing from our position, we've come back to Samatitihi at the beginning at the front of the mat and then we're stepping out um, about you know two and a half to three feet apart depending on the length of your legs really. Yeah. The wider your legs, the closer it will seem that your head is to the floor. Well, it, your head will be closer to the floor, but sometimes we can again be escaping out of the posture by taking our legs too wide, yeah? So they don't want to be super, super wide. A little bit more than natural, yeah? Okay, and so from there, with an inhale, now we don't initiate a back bend as we're about to go into it, but we still want some lengthening. So we're thinking about lengthening up, and we can now feel our hands on our hips, yeah? And this also gives us an indication of where we'd like to move from, yeah? So from there, we've inhaled and then we're going to exhale forward. We want to feel the movement coming from here and we're trying to create a neutral spine for as long as possible, yeah? Then we'll get to a certain stage. We can place our hands down on the floor and then we're going to inhale, lift up and then exhale, fold forward a little bit more, okay? So, we're looking for, if possible, the legs to be straight, but if not, we can bend them a little bit. We're looking for, from this position, the hips not to be in front, not to be behind the feet, yeah? We're looking for activation on the insides of the arches, but also pressing down onto the outsides of the feet, yeah? Then at the head end, what we're looking for is we need to take our hands back so that we can sort of create a 90 degree angle between our upper arm and our lower arm, yeah? Now, it's true that, you know, we're looking towards getting our head maybe touching the floor, but to me that's very much a proportional thing. If you've got a long lower body relative to a short upper body, then, you know, you'd have to take your legs quite wide and forward to get your head down. Um, and vice versa, if you took your head, legs really wide, you'd get your head down, but you might be missing out the opportunity of the posture. So to me, that's just secondary fluff at the end of the stuff. So just think instead of the weight of your head dropping down towards the floor, lengthening the whole of the spine, yeah? And it really gives you opportunity to let gravity help you in some of these postures, yeah? Now, depending on your hamstring length, it might be that you do need to bend your knees, yeah? Uh, and again, it might be that you have to maybe we bring you up, 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 maybe in bring your hands here. And it might be that that is your posture, yeah? Even with the knees slightly bent, yeah? Which is fine, you know? You're working at something. Much better that than straight legs and just do a curved body for me. So straight, straighten your legs and then just this. Much better this, and then you could probably bend those. Much better the, what we've just showed you than that, yeah? Because again, all the stresses is going to go into your back here, yeah? So pick what's right for you, and then what you're going to be doing is working into the areas that needs it, which is the back of the body for sure, but it's the back of the body below the hip. Some of this a little bit too, but not as much, yeah? So that was A, yeah? And then coming out of that, we're placing our hands on our hips and we're inhaling all the way up, exhaling there. Inhale, take our arms out to the side. Exhale, bring them back to our hips. Inhale, lift, and then exhale, fold forward. Yeah? So we're going to land up in a similar position, but just not with our hands on the floor. Now, the beauty of having the, your hands in your waist is A, you get a chance to open the chest by drawing your elbows towards the back of the body, but also the fact that you've got your fingertips in your belly, yeah? So what you want to do is relax your bandhas when you're in that position. So we're talking about Uddiyana Bandha, Mula Bandha, and then see what your belly feels like with your fingertips, and then re-engage, yeah? And feel that slight drawing in. So it's not a massive, great crunching, but that energetic drawing in and the activation of the lower belly, Muller Banda also, yeah? And then continue your breathing and your fingertips are there to monitor 
whether you lose your banda or not. So for me, this is a really good posture, like a banda check-in. See whether you're actually fully keeping it the whole time or whether it comes on when you first do it and then within two breaths it's disappeared again, which can often be the case, yeah? So, again, the main thing is just feeling that lengthening of the spine and the head moving down, bending the knees if you have to, yeah? Good, and then when you've done your breaths, you'll be coming all the way up, exhaling, inhaling, take your arms around, interlacing, and then inhaling up and exhaling, folding forward. Now, you've got a couple of choices with the hands as far as I see. You know, you can have your hands apart like this, or you can have your fists of your, the heels of your hands together. Depends what you like. For me, I like the heels of the hands together, yeah? Uh, and really, again, we want to be thinking about the weight of our arms allowing us to move into this position of extension at the shoulder, which we don't get so many postures where we've got a chance to do this, so it's quite nice, yeah? Unfortunately for me, this is also the most over-adjusted posture in yoga, you know? Anybody walking along the street and sees you in this posture, they'll come in and try and adjust you because it just like invites an adjustment. But you have a long lever with this arm coming out here and relatively small muscles around the shoulder um, that will be influenced by you pressing down on that long lever. So for me, I really don't like this particular adjustment. I feel that it can put a lot of pressure around the front of the shoulder here, particularly there's a little joint called the... Um, Acromio, uh, what's it called? AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint, yeah? Um, this sort of levering can move that joint, and once it's a little bit damaged, it creates lots of problems. So should somebody be adjusting you, it'd be nice if they adjusted you above the elbow. That gives them less levering. Um, and again, a gentle adjustment, yeah, is all that's uh, needed for this particular posture. When you're ready, you can come on up. Yeah, and we're into our last one where we're going to be folding and taking hold of our big toes if we can reach them, yeah. And then on an exhale, fold down. You can see that we're skipping through a lot of the vinyasa breaths. You'll, you'll have your own practice and you'll know what you're doing as far as those go. Um, this is more about what you're doing actually in the postures rather than the sequencing of the breathing to get into the posture, yeah? So, from this position, we want to create space around the neck, yeah? So we're looking to take our arms and our shoulders wide, and basically, I think, in line, elbows in line with the wrists, yeah? And about a 90 degree angle here, yeah? Now, you can, you know, as they go through these, you might want to walk your feet in a little bit as you warm up, or, um, find the space that suits you, yeah? You might need to take them wider. The main thing is to be comfy, and again, if you need to bend your knees, bend your knees slightly, yeah? So as you can keep your spine as straight as possible, yeah? Obviously, it's gonna curve somewhat, but what we don't want is a big, big curve, yeah? Because again, you're just gonna take the pressure into the low back, yeah? So creating a nice width across the top of the back, and feeling the weight of the head as it hangs towards the floor, yeah? With your fingers, as they're clasping the toes, uh, I think it's better to tuck the thumb in rather than place it down on the floor because, again, that can place pressure into the thumb joints, yeah? So you can either tuck it in or just place it gently on your fingertips, so almost like a little mudra going on. Good. Okay, and then when you've done your breath, you'll be inhaling and then exhaling there and then inhaling all the way up. Good, and then coming back to center. Now, that coming back to center also for me is quite an important thing because particularly if your legs are wide, then we wanna be able to try and step back in one step, yeah, and under control. All these things are chances to work on our coordination, to work on our strength, and to actually bring ourselves mindfully back to what we're doing. Because if we're here, and then we just sort of do this, and we're, okay, now we're ready to go again, you know, it's not the same as if it's very positive, and we're turning, and then we're placing our foot down without, you know, going over to the side there, so it wasn't a very good example of it. 
but you know what I mean. We're trying to create some balance, some grounding in our feet, and some constant work through the whole practice. Yeah? So think of your feet and think of that same stepping out the same. Try and go to where you want to be there and then on each step. Yeah, good. That's all for today, and see you again soon.